She Hulk just released, and no one's watching it. And Miss Marvel got even lesser viewer counts. It is extremely clear that we have stopped watching everything that Marvel puts out. I haven't even seen Thor Love and Thunder, which is quite an important part of the MCU. I only see this as the death of MCU. In 2018, I was staring at this theater app to see if Infinity War booking had started. I was doing this literally every second of the day. When I was pooping, when I was brushing my teeth, when I was washing the monkey, when I was talking to the monkey, and even when I was sleeping. All I wanted to do was watch this movie. And now I don't even check to see if there's anything from Marvel to watch. And I miss my monkey. So let's talk about why the Marvel Empire has fallen. This is what Marvel was. It was the first franchise to bring together a whole bunch of extremely fascinating heroes and be the iconic part of a whole bunch of people's childhood. And it all built up to these two movies in 2019. And then he died. And so did the MCU. This is what Marvel is now. A very sick individual. And there's Disney near them, just regularly slapping the back of their head until they vomit. And that's where we are. Just consuming the entirety of this MCU Disney vomit. Just vomit. That's all you can call these movies. Now that I've got this image stuck in your brain for eternity, let's elaborate. The vomit metaphor is basically quality over quantity. Marvel has been pushing out content like its Darman videos, which imprisons down to create magic children, lives to the credit. It's obvious why they're doing this. It's for the tendies, it's for the chat chain. It's what Disney loves doing. Okay, so dude, you know how like Amelia Clark signed up for a future MCU project? Well, yeah, she's gonna get this role in Sacred Invasion. I was thinking like, oh, Sacred Invasion, she must be getting a cooler role. Like a really cool Horus agent person thing. And now I read this Marvel leak, and apparently she's playing this green ass ball sack looking alien dog thing. Dude, Amelia, Amelia Clark, Amelia Clark, Amelia Clark. Now, I'm not saying that the first three phases of the MCU were masterpieces, or even art. Most of it were the same movies. All main characters and side characters and whatever else there are in these movies are the same. Maybe I'll make a video on that later. But Marvel wasn't perfection before. Doctor Strange and Infinity War were really good movies. But the rest were, well, they were all the same. So why did we watch all that then and not a lot now? The iconic heroes defined MCU. We had Iron Man, Thor, Captain America. People watched MCU for this, for them. It was never really about the storytelling or the cinematography. It was about the heroes, and we cared about these heroes. And Marvel was literally the only good superhero stuff out there. Whereas now, you know, since Marvel is shitting out these movies and shows more than any dumb after breakfast at Taco Bell, neither the writers nor the artists get to fine tune or really even tune the content. The heroes need to have some setbacks or consequences to getting these powers. Miss Marvel literally just had to put on an item and she gets to be a superhero. They could have at least made the item embarrassing. Like a t-shirt that says weep for life or something, I don't know. Why should we care over the heroes when it's all like this? So this constraint of time has ended up making every content in the MCU be written bad. And look bad too. Emilia Cl Emilia Clark. They're making Emilia Clark play this green ass ugly ass scroll on face dude. Like why is she green? Why is she even green? Like why is Marvel making everyone green? It looks so ugly. Isn't that racist? What? What? Sh shut up! It's green! What the hell is that space racism? I don't even care about green levels, dude. Green levels can- Now we go to the second big problem. Rising stakes. So in Avengers, the stake was the world. But let's be honest, it was New York City. In Age of Ultron, it was the entire world. In Infinity War and Endgame, it was the entire universe. And in the next one, it's apparently the entire multiverse. It's like a drug addiction. You get high and you're addicted, but now you need stronger material to feel the same dopamine. So now you have to use stronger and stronger stuff to feel the same feeling. Marvel loves to make jokes about its old stakes and make fun of how little of a problem it is considered now. This means that they have to keep rising the stakes. This is especially bad considering how serious these stakes are and how moderately they're shown in the movies. There's no consequences of serious trauma that the collective humanity or the heroes have after these stakes, other than maybe like 20 minutes worth of it in the entire universe. So what's next, right? The multiverse is already at stake, so what's next? Time? You see, time was already at stake in Doctor Strange and in Loki. This takes us to the next problem. No planning ahead. Marvel does not plan ahead. 
But let's be honest, how can it? When there's three movies and four Disney Plus shows coming a year, how are the writers supposed to fail-proof the script and the ideas for the future? Marvel can't and won't write down the full story till the end, so the movies will eventually contradict each other. To want an example, take the multiverse. We first saw the multiverse in Doctor Strange 1. The Ancient One spoke about the multiverse to Doctor Strange during the monologue, Open Your Eye. The writers wanted a multiverse, so they put it in the script. But what they couldn't know was that the multiverse would be much different in the future MCU. America Chavez is as useful as a 5 minute crafts video. Multiverse is a different concept in Doctor Strange No Way Home and Loki. This creates this discontinuity and honestly th there's no way to maintain a continuity when these movies are six years apart and everything changes and the writers, how do you expect the writers to predict what MCU will be in the next 10 years? Martin Scorsese once compared Marvel movies to theme parks in 2019. That little comparison holds true not for only Phase 4 but everything before. It's close to impossible to make something of meaning when you have to make a universe so contrast and gigantic with little to no time for writing. A theme park is the exact definition of MCU. When you go to a theater, there's always gonna be an MCU film playing. There's three movies that release per year. So it is exactly like theme park where each other ride aren't unique. They're the same thing, but it's always there so you can be entertained whenever you wanna go there. There's this quote from The Dark Knight. You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. You can change this for a bit for a pseudo movie franchise. A franchise either ends as a masterpiece or it goes on for long enough to become bland and meaningless. Like, she's a scroll. Like, Marvel had one job of hiring this woman and they make her look like my grandfather's ball sack on St. Patrick's Day. Like, dude, Emilia Clark, Emilia Clark, Emilia Clark. Dude, who is Emilia Clark? Marvel didn't have a meaningful or peaceful device. Hell, I'm calling it dead when it just released plans for the next few years. It's not even close to ending, but this is where Marvel ends for me. So what I'm coming to is, goodbye Marvel. I guess we had our fun, but farewell.